Around 8 a.m. this morning, Matthew Hambrick woke up to what he thought was the sound of a dryer and the smell of bacon cooking. But as screams of a fire were heard from Jonathan Willis, he quickly became aware that he was sadly mistaken. For the town of Winterville, the Watermelon Festival offers the community an opportunity to mingle with their neighbors. I spoke with Jim Howard, our meteorologist this morning, who said that we're looking at about four feet of storm surge, which is a drastic difference than what we saw during Hurricane Florence in 2018. What's up, everyone? I'm here at the Orlando Health Fortress at Full Sail University, and we are officially one hour away from the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. You can buy a new outfit or weapon for your video game character without even leaving the house. And now imagine that kind of unsupervised power in the hands of your child. $100 million worth of damage. That's what the city of New Bern was left with following Hurricane Florence. But spirits are high here after businesses and residents were able to bounce back following the storm. What is it about this school, this program? You could go anywhere in the country. Everybody knows who you are. Everybody would love the opportunity to talk to you. What is it about this place that keeps you coming back? Well, Ellie, I think it's the, the determination from the faculty. Whether you're driving a fuel-efficient vehicle, a pickup truck, or even a scooter, you are bound to feel the heavy gas prices weighing on your wallet every time you're at the pump. The homeowner has been cooperative with rescue efforts, and according to Party Farms Animal Sanctuary, 16 animals have already been removed from the property. He works in their Amazon warehouse unit, and a lot of them just were focusing in on the fact that, yes, his brain does work a little bit differently. But never once has he said, oh, I can't do that or I won't do that. He just uses that to his advantage all the time. This meeting between Biden and Xi Jinping is happening on the margins of the G20 summit. What all do we know about what they'll discuss? Russell, it seems like the talk of the town has been the lottery and Hurricane Nicole. Now, I didn't win the lottery, so I was a bit unlucky. Do you think we can get lucky with a good forecast? Shortly after Deputy Edwards was let go, the district attorney dismissed the criminal charges against Thomas, as well as his aunt, who tried to intervene during Thomas's arrest, saying it was in the interests of justice. And we have more breaking news for you just now into our newsroom surrounding the murder in Kinston we just told you about. A man here in the east is in custody following a shooting that left one woman injured. Kinston police say Christopher Gordon of Princeton is charged with attempted first-degree murder, first-degree burglary, stalking, and assault. We are continuing to follow a developing story in Duplin County after deputies say two people's bodies were found in a rental home last Wednesday. Duplin County Sheriff's Office say they received a call about the bodies potentially being inside of the home at 187 John Rich Road around 3 a.m. Deputies found 68-year-old Leslie Savage and 72-year-old Craig Smith dead. Deputies say Savage lived at the residence and believe Smith recently moved in. A nearby neighbor tells WITN they saw investigators wearing hazmat suits on the scene the next day. Duplin County Sheriff's Captain Scott Kennedy explained why. Our investigators are always very careful as far as making sure that we're preserving uh, the scene and, and uh, collecting any DNA evidence and, and any, any evidence that when it is collected that it is uh, collected properly. Deputies say they have persons of interest but haven't made any arrest yet. Captain Kennedy says they're offering a $5,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest and convictions of the persons responsible. Friday will be four weeks and I have not heard from or seen my son. For Sonoma Jefferson, the last month has consisted of search parties and press conferences as she continues to look for her missing son, Khalil Jefferson, who was last seen along the Greenville Greenway. Jefferson has said that her son, a veteran, had left a note indicating that he may have intended to harm himself. It's something that resonated with one of the volunteers, a Marine veteran himself. Feeling like that you're all alone and nowhere to turn and you just get into a, a mindset that you're just at just low. And it's a low that you can't really describe, you know what I mean? And, and you feel there's only one way out. And as Sonoma works to keep her spirits high, Greenville moms are banding together to make sure she knows she is loved and supported 
by the community her son was a part of. No mother should have to deal with this. In addition, he is a vet. Um, you know, my fiance is here, my friend is here to support. You know, we want to bring the soldier home. No soldier should be left behind. Limited information is known about the last time Khalil was seen, but Sonoma Jefferson says she found her son's car parked at the Green Spring Park and his jackets, keys, and glasses in the Tar River. On their hands and knees, strangers, friends, and loved ones spent their time supporting Sonoma. They're just doing it out of the kindness of their hearts. They're, they're, they're taking time out of their day um, where they could be doing anything else. You know, we're still in the holidays. New Year's is coming up, and people are taking time out of their day to come to help me to find my son. And the search will continue on as Sonoma Jefferson says her hope is still alive for her son's return.